in the last stream, we were working on completing the freezing quest line here in the quest book. We got all of the initial frozen ores, those being iron, tin, copper, and coal. We also set up our first tier two resource generator, and we managed to get a regular brick furnace that we upgraded to a blast brick furnace, which I have found out between streams is actually twice as fast as the regular brick furnace. And the regular brick furnace is about the same speed as a regular Minecraft furnace. So this blast furnace here is substantially faster and is worth the investment. And one of the things that we did do in the last stream to get the resource generator is dig all the way down to, I think around Y level 20 to try and find a pool of lava. Unfortunately, we were not successful in finding a pool of lava. We found one individual lava source block that was just flowing down and kind of looked like a pool from the minimap. Thankfully, between streams, I have gone ahead and done a bit more exploration, this time around Y level negative 50, so much lower down, but I have been successful in finding a pool of lava. And so I think the first thing that I would like to do in today's stream is get one more bucket of water the reason for that is that I'd like to take two buckets of water down to the lowest levels of the world with me, because I think what we should do is get at least three more of these tier two resource generators, because I'd like to have one for the frozen diorite, one for frozen granite, one for frozen andesite, and of course, one for frozen deep slate. And that does remind me, thankfully, Ben and Cryptic have updated the pack between streams and now frozen deep slate does work on top of the resource generator tier two and so if we can get three more of these tier two resource generators we can generate all of the frozen rocks required to make all of the different ores that we're going to need for the foreseeable future around the orchid and once we have these automated we can then look at actually automating the placing and breaking of those blocks around the orchid to automate some resource production now of course to do that we need to go and get three more buckets of lava and i don't know if we're going to be able to carry three buckets of lava back up to the surface with us, I, I think that's going to be too hot and it is going to cause us to start to take some damage. And so instead, what I'm thinking is if we quickly eat some toast and food is something I probably want to look at working on in today's stream because we don't have much of it left. This toast is really the only good thing we have after this. We're down to uh, just apricots, which don't even restore one chicken legs worth of hunger. But uh, we'll look at getting some food later on, I think. But I'm thinking if we can get two buckets of water, we can head down to the lowest white levels. We can get an infinite water source placed down right next to the lava. And then what we should be able to do is just make all of the resource generator tier twos down by the pool of lava. All we'd have to do is take a crafting table and some variant of cobblestone down with us. And as luck would have it, because I've done so much mining to get down to Y level negative 50 between streams, I do already have a bunch of cobbled deep slate ready to go. And in fact, I do know that there is also a crafting table already partway down here. It's not where it actually needs to be, but uh, I was mining down and I didn't want to have to come all the way back up to make a fresh stone pickaxe. And I instead just decided to throw down another crafting table right about here. So I'm gonna steal this crafting table that I placed down. And if we go even further down here, here it is, our tiny, tiny little pool of lava. So I'll throw down the crafting table. In fact, I'll give myself a little bit more space right here. And then let's also get this unlimited water source down as well. Boom and boom. Now we can take unlimited water from the center. And so if we just grab the lava bucket and do something like this, we can just repeat this a few more times until we have as many resource generators as we like. Again, I think for now, we're just gonna stick with four. They are essentially free at this point. We could make as many as we have lava source blocks here, but I don't really currently foresee a reason to make more than three of these. And of course, if we wanted to, we could always come back down in the future and craft even more of them. And in fact, before we head back up to the surface, I do want to try something here. I'm going to carry one bucket of lava back with us. My thought process being that the lava bucket here is quite hot, very hot indeed, hot enough to actually cause us to set on fire previously. And so I'm wondering if we take the bucket of lava out with us when we go up onto the surface, whether or not that will do enough to kind of counteract the freezing cold nature of the outside world and kind of keep us at a nice warm temperature. Yeah, so it looks like the effect only happens when we're actually holding 
the lava. But if we're holding the lava and we go up to the surface, instead of being cold, it looks like we are kind of just neutral. I wonder if that same effect is true even if we take our armor off. No, it's not quite good enough to keep us warm without the armor, but you'll see it goes blue to signify we're cold, and then we hold the lava bucket and it goes back to being gray, so we're kind of neutral, which is pretty nifty, actually. So we can carry this around both as a light source, but also as a heat source in the future, should we need it. So let's go ahead and throw down all three of our resource generators. We'll go one, two, and three. And just to be safe, because I don't want any hostile mobs spawning in this area of the base, we'll throw down a few more torches around like so. We'll then craft up a couple more storage drawers. We might have to grab a few more logs to make that happen. Right now, we can make one more storage drawer, but if we're gonna make the other two, we are gonna have to get a few more. That's fine, let's get a couple of these things down. So diorite, I think, is actually the thing we're already making. Frozen deep slate, again, I do believe should now work. It totally does, fantastic. Granite is kind of the one that I want to get a lot of quickly because I would like to get a fair bit of copper. You'll see why in just a second, but that should also work. And then finally, of course, we just need the ender site. We'll do the same here with the frozen ice shard and we'll drop that down right about there. And then while we let those do their thing, let's quickly go cut down a few more trees and see if we can't get enough wood to make two more storage drawers. Boom and boom, a little bit of tree chopping later. We have all of the drawers required to get all of these resource generators online. And somebody in the Twitch chat does actually make a fairly decent point here. Also, I should point out that between streams, I have tried to organize these chests a little bit. We've got all of our blocks up in the top chest and all of our farming stuff and just general items in the bottom chest. But Bonnie Pots are in the pack and these are gonna make it much easier for us to automate the farming of crops going forward for food, but also for trees to get as easy wood. So the barney pots themselves are fairly easy to make. It's five terracotta with one flower pot. That is essentially just a bunch of clay. And then we can upgrade these to hopping barney pots, which will automatically output their wares once the crop inside of them is fully grown. Now, thankfully, we do have coal. And so we do now have the ability to make a regular old furnace again. Again, the regular furnace is the uh, the same speed as the brick furnace. We could have made another brick furnace, but it wouldn't have been any faster. So we'll throw in the clay there, and we'll also throw in some planks as well, just to get that going. While that is going, let's grab some more dirt, as well as some more gravel. That gets us the coarse dirt and the coarse dirt. We can slam down into clay. Nice. We can then craft that back up into block form. We need three more to get us the five that we need, although, I think ideally we do want to get two hopping botany pots here. If we can get two hopping botany pots, we can dedicate one to food, potentially wheat seeds, and we can dedicate the other one to a sampling, potentially an oak sampling, to get us unlimited wood. So for that, we are going to need a yet more clay. Thankfully, I did make a ton extra of this coarse dirt. And we just need to smell a bunch of that up into brick. Once we have the 10 terracotta, we can then do something like this and this, that gets us two flower pots. And if we craft those with the 10 terracotta, that gets us two botany pots. And now if we want to upgrade these, we do need to get two more iron hoppers, which is at least 10 more iron, which is a little pricey, but I think very doable in fact. All we need to do is take some of our frozen diorite and over here we've got almost 400 frozen diorite because this has been chugging away between streams whilst i've been mining and i do think that we probably have again a fair bit of mana in the mana pool because again these have been running whilst i've been doing other things and so getting 10 more iron really shouldn't be too difficult nice so we've got enough iron to make our first hopper here. So let's craft down some more planks. Let's get the two chests ready to go while we wait for the rest to smelt. And if we do something like this, we can craft that hopper with our botany pot and we get our hopping botany pot, which we can then place directly above a chest. So if we did something like this, we can then place regular dirt into the botany pot like so. And we can place the thing that we want to grow, in this case, an oak sampling into that botany pot as well. 
and that should start slowly but surely growing into a I was going to say a full-size tree, but obviously it's not a full-size tree. It's a very miniature tree, but it is going to grow into the equivalent of a full-size tree. And then when it does fully grow, it will then automatically get cut down and the drops will be placed into this chest. If we press U while hovering over the sampling and go to the botany pot tab here, we can see that every time it finishes a cycle, which does take two minutes on regular dirt, depending on the block you put in as farmland, it will take different amounts of time but on dirt the oak sampling takes two minutes which is not incredibly fast but it is automated and every two minutes we have a 100% chance of getting between two and four oak locks we also have a 10% chance of getting one to two sticks we have a 5% chance of getting one apple and we have a 15% chance of getting one sampling and so those are all going to be deposited into this chest and if we just leave that going we effectively have an unlimited tree farm albeit a very very slow one the other iron is done we could do the same thing again here if we make yet another chest and we upgrade that to a hopper we should then be able to upgrade this and if we place that down above another chest we can then place in yet more dirt like so and this time we could place in something like a wheat seed and that is going to continually grow wheat for us to allow us to make something like bread in the future which is hopefully going to allow us to not die once we run out of toast sandwiches and as luck would have it in this pack what we can do is instead of crafting three wheat into one bread we can craft three wheat with one water bucket to get three wheat dough as always you get the bucket back it just uses the water and then you can smelt that wheat dough directly into bread effectively allowing us to get one piece of bread per wheat and therefore tripling the uh, efficiency of our wheat of course for this to work we do need to put another storage device beneath this botany pot and as luck would have it look at that our oak sapling has come in clutch and we have exactly the right amount to make one more chest the wheat here is thankfully a lot faster this only takes one minute to grow and uh, you have a hundred percent chance to get one or two wheat and a 5% chance to get one or two wheat seeds. You can, if you want, squeeze out a tiny bit more efficiency if you transform your dirt into farmland. You'll see that the dirt here has a 1x speed, whereas the farmland has a 1.05x speed, so it is 5% faster. Uh, thankfully, it is very easy to do. If I were to do something like this and get a stone hoe, we can then just right-click onto the dirt, and you'll see at the top there, it has transformed into farmland and just doing that small little thing will increase the efficiency ever so slightly we do have enough wheat here to where if we wanted to we could go and get some water we probably should bring two buckets of water down with us to make an unlimited water source obviously up until now we've just been using the uh, bowls of water to get our water for the petal apothecary but i think it's going to be in our best interest to grab two buckets here and set up a reusable source of water down in our cave so we don't have to keep coming back up to the surface every time we need water so we'll place that down right about here in fact you know what i always make a, a three by one water source i'm going to mix it up and we're going to do a two by two water source which looks something like this boom so now you can take from any of these four source blocks that gets us water and then if we craft that water with our three wheat like so we get wafer cones which are not the correct recipe Although it looks like, can I shift click this in? Oh, I can't. It looks like there's a conflicting recipe, unfortunately. And I don't think that we're going to be able to specify that we want this recipe instead. So I think that's something that's gonna have to be fixed like on the, on the mod packs end and not uh, on our end. For now, that gets us wafer cones from snowy weaponry, which is not particularly useful. I guess what we can do is just make a regular old piece of bread and then eat that. It's not quite as efficient as I was hoping, but it does still get some kind of job done. Anyway, now that we have done all of that, let's take a look at the next quest line here, which is Frozen Progress. This one begins with Frozen Treasures. It says you can break snow blocks for a chance to obtain golden nuggets. And in fact, we did that unknowingly right at the start of the pack. We have five gold nuggets in our chest here. That's not really enough to do anything. I do see that there are a few quests here that require the redstone flux coils because you also need one for the pulverizer and for the magma crucible and sterling dynamo and so we are going to need to get a couple of gold ingots worth of nuggets before we can press forward that way that shouldn't be too difficult 
we are also going to need some more golden nuggets from the machine frames as well. I'm not entirely certain on what the drop chance is for getting golden nuggets in snow, but there is a lot of snow out here, and so we can try and break it very, very quickly. The only problem with this is just it's, it's so much snow that we can't really carry it or store it, and apparently the odds of getting a golden nugget are very, very low because we broke a ton of snow blocks just there. I didn't get a single golden nugget. I am going to make a storage drawer for snowballs. I don't know if it's strictly necessary. We could probably just get rid of them, but they are already taking up a lot of space in our chest here. And so just to get them out of our chest and uh, just in case we do need them in the future, we'll drop them down over there. For now, I think five might be fine because the next quest wants us to make the machine frame from RF tools. This is four iron with two gold and two blue dye. I'll bookmark that. The blue dye is obviously fairly easy for us because we do have access to mystical blue flowers. We can take those, we can craft those into blue petals, and then of course we can craft those directly into blue dye. So that is not going to be a problem. The only thing that's a little trickier is the iron. Real quick, that is my bad. At the top there, this is snow, whereas over here, these are snow blocks. And I guess it's snow blocks that we need to break, not snow, if we want to get gold nuggets. Interesting. Okay, let me real quick then try getting some more sticks, and then let's also get just the one cobblestone. We'll make a regular shovel. If I were to try and break a couple of the snow blocks here, is that more likely to give us a gold nugget? Still no luck. I guess what we can do is we can actually craft the snow that we have into snow blocks, then place those down. And I assume that Ultimine, Ultimine doesn't work, unfortunately. That would have made life a little bit easier, but I guess one use for these snowballs here is making snow blocks that we can then place. And I didn't know you could craft the book with one snowball either, but uh, if we just get a bunch of snow blocks here, we can place those down and break them to see if we can't try and find some gold nuggets. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. We managed to get 54 gold nuggets, which is enough to make our very first gold ingot, which is going to be useful for this redstone flux coil. The flux coil here does require some actual redstone, and the actual redstone is also fairly easy to get. I believe we get it the same way that we get frozen copper ore, and that is via frozen granite. It is indeed. So if we were to grab a stack of frozen granite and throw this down, I was going to say I'm not quite sure what the odds are, but we have it already. We've got some redstone, which we can go ahead and mine. That's going to complete that quest. And once again, it would appear that we need to smelt that. And then much like with the copper, we can just place it. And of course, breaking that will get us a bunch of redstone. Speaking of copper, I think one thing I would like to do sooner rather than later is expand out our cave and try and make it look a little bit nicer. Now, to do that, with our current pickaxe would take us quite a while because it's not particularly fast and breaking these walls, while not necessarily slow, is not ideal. And as luck would have it, we do have access to hammers from the tools complement mod. These can mine in a three by three area and are generally faster than the stone pickaxe that we have here. And just because of the fact that you get so much copper when you break a copper ore versus iron when you break an iron ore, I think it's gonna be worth us taking our frozen copper, smelting that, of course, into copper ore. We can, of course, place that down, break that open, and unlike with iron, where we just get one piece, with copper, we get multiple. And so getting up to the 13 copper required to make a copper hammer, I don't think is gonna to be too difficult, at which point we could look at expanding this out and making this area much bigger, much faster. While we wait for that to smelt, we can break the redstone, like so. The shaders do look quite cool there, and actually, I do need an iron pickaxe if we want that to work, which is unfortunate because I did break my old iron pickaxe. We could make a gold one, funnily enough, but I don't think that's worth investing in. Instead, I think it's probably worth just smelting down this frozen iron ore and trying to get that iron pickaxe. So we'll throw the iron ore in the blast furnace there. 13 copper is actually enough to make the hammer. So if we do something like this, we should then be able to start making this room bigger substantially faster. Oh my, I didn't realize that we were so close to 
liquid. Interesting. That could pose a problem. I actually don't know where the source blocks end. It shouldn't be too difficult for us to block this off. All right, so it turns out that was all source blocks, unfortunately, but I think we managed to get almost all of them. And uh, of course, we do want to make sure that we don't lose any of our glacier flora. Yeah, let's place that back down. But the point still stands in that now that we have this hammer, making our room bigger should be a much easier endeavor going forward. Of course, let's make sure we do have a light available to us here. Let's also take that iron, place that back in. And as soon as we have enough iron to make a pickaxe, we should be able to break that redstone and complete that quest. Nice. So now this quest up here is interesting because it unlocks for us the storage scanner, which I think is going to make our lives a lot easier and it's going to make our storage situation much, much nicer. So as we saw earlier, the machine frame, four iron, two gold nuggets, and two blue dye. The iron we now have, the blue dye we now have, and the gold nuggets we now have. And so boom, boom, and boom, we have the machine frame. And if we want to upgrade it to a storage scanner, we just need two copper, two tin, and four redstone torches. That is thankfully a recipe that has been tweaked and has been made substantially easier than it normally would be. In terms of frozen tin, I think we do have some lying around somewhere. We actually already have one tin ready to go. Never mind, we don't have any tin. It turns out tin is frozen andesite, which I think is the thing we've placed down the least of. But nevertheless, we do still have a ton of it ready to go and more than enough mana to make a bunch of tin happen. Let's go and ultimine all of that over here, our copper should be done it is indeed let's throw in some frozen tin and at this point we are going to need a bit more fuel as well but this is of course where that body pop comes in because we have been passively getting wood this whole time which we can then turn into charcoal for that added fuel this is also done and hopefully if we're lucky we might get just the one tin ingot that we need here we did indeed fantastic back over here we now just need two more sticks would you look at that the bonnie pot knows exactly what i need today and four redstone torches should be everything for us to get the storage scanner nice so the storage scanner unfortunately for us does require power so i'll place it down like this but it does require power in order to work and to get that power we're probably going to have to head over to this sterling dynamo to make that, we need one gold ingot and two redstone. That is for the flux coil. That, thankfully, is a very straightforward recipe, like so. And then the sterling dynamo is also fairly straightforward. It's two stone, one redstone, two iron ingots, that redstone flux coil, and then the iron gear. The iron gear is just a bunch more iron. And so, again, it's just a case of taking any iron ore that we have, which apparently in this scenario is none. Did I smell all of it? I must have done that's fine let's take yet more frozen diorite it might even be worth looking at getting a few more blast brick furnaces just to allow us to start processing some of this stuff that little bit faster all right so all of that iron there is smelted i'm not entirely certain if 11 is going to be enough but while i was waiting for that to smell i did craft up two more of these blast brick furnaces so going forward we should be able to smelt things substantially faster we'll put some fuel in these just to get them ready to go over here we do need to get one iron gear like so we also need two stone i think any stone will work thankfully we do have regular stone ready to go and boom that's actually everything to make the sterling dynamo which we can then place down right about here and that is going to feed power into our storage scanner and the sterling dynamo quite handily just takes regular old fuel as it's power source so you can put in wood planks sticks coal charcoal whatever it is and it is going to burn that to produce power and it's going to send that power into the storage scanner now the reason that the storage scanner is so nifty is that here at the bottom there is a sliding scale and when you hover over it it says this is the radius that the scanner will use to find storages so you could set this all the way up to 20 blocks if you do that it will scan 20 blocks in each direction and it will list all of the available inventories in that area what we can then do is we can then click on any of those inventories and we can see what is inside that inventory. So here is our chest. It's right down here. Uh, right beneath that, we have our other chest. It's this one right here. I believe it does show double chests as being one chest inside of the interface. We can, of course, go further down. We can see our storage drawers for all of the frozen stones that we have. And if we want, we can even see inside 
of the hopping body parts and also inside of the blast furnaces. Now, the even cooler thing is that if we go ahead and click the little star next to the chest icon, we can make these rootable. And we're gonna go ahead and make all of the inventories that we want to be able to access rootable. What I mean by that is that we don't really want to be taking things into or out of the hopping botany pots. I don't want to try and pull a sapling out of here and have it take this sapling, right? I want that sapling to stay there. Same is true for the blast furnaces. I don't really want to be taking charcoal out of here. I don't really want to be putting random things into here. I don't want to access those via the storage scanner. The things that I do want to access are these two chests right here, all of these storage drawers over here, and this double chest right here, which I believe is this chest it is indeed once we have all of those set to rootable now at the top we can click all rootable and it's going to show us all of the items in all of our chests in one convenient location we can then toggle this down here i like to sort mine by amount descending so it shows us the thing that we have the most of in the top left slot and the thing that we have the least of that being gold ingots in the bottom right slot and even better still we can now take things out of this directly you'll see i just clicked on that wheat and it moved it from this drawer over here and placed it directly in my inventory and if i were to shift click this it would take it out of my inventory and place it back into the system the only trouble with this is that it's going to place it somewhere random uh, in fact it placed it right here but i think that's fine i don't think that's going to be a problem for us it could be a problem for this chest but what I think we should probably do is replace this chest with storage drawers. If we get a few more chests here, and by a few more, I mean ideally four more, we'll then get momentarily interrupted by a few zombie friends here. I'm not quite sure where they came from, but I should probably look into that to make sure I don't get any unwanted visitors in the future. But once we have four chests here, we can actually make a new kind of of storage drawer, that being the 2x2 two two storage drawer. This is a drawer that can still hold 2048 items in total, much like these drawers over here, but it can hold four different items and 512 of each, as opposed to one singular item and 2048 of that one item, if that makes sense. So basically, if we were to break both of these, and once again, take care of the intruder, there we go, let me also break this chest, we do need to make yet another x but what we can do now is we can place down our drawers here and here and the benefit of this is that this has enough slots for basically everything that we want because one slot is going to be for saplings the other is going to be for sticks the other is going to be for logs and the final one is going to be for apples over here not quite the same story uh, this one we're just going to dedicate two to wheat and two to seeds like this and now in here if we make those drawers rootable, now, whilst we can still take things out of these drawers, the system won't try and put anything into a slot that already has something in it. So we can't obviously put uh, bricks into the slot that already has saplings in it, which is pretty cool. Let me quickly grab a few torches here, and let's go see if we can't find where these zombies are spawning. I don't know if there's gonna be like a specific area where they're spawning. By the way, if you press F7, that is gonna show the light overlay on the ground like this if you see a red x that means that a hostile mob can spawn there if you see a yellow x that means that a hostile mob cannot spawn there or can spawn there when it gets dark potentially let me put those down just to make sure if you can't see any red x's it means that you are in the clear and no mobs are going to spawn so it's quite possible they did make their way all the way up because they uh, they are making their way up here that would have been quite the trek for them to make though and quite the pathfinding endeavor for them to go around this corner but either way we have managed to acquire the knowledge of death. Zero to one. Oh, there is a witch there. I would like to not die, if at all possible. Let's quickly eat a toast sandwich. I think we've got enough torches down to where we shouldn't see any more mobs coming up. We did get a loot box, which gave us something i'm actually not too sure what we had initially so i don't know what we gained from that we also got a little reward curse of bones interesting either way over here we can now put down even more chests and going forward i think i'm probably not gonna care too much 
about what is in each draw. Like right now, we've tried to curate them to keep blocks in this uh, chest and, you know, everything else in this chest. But going forward, we can just use the storage scanner. Anything that we want to put away, we can just shift left click and it will find a home in one of these chests. And even better still, we can actually craft inside of the storage scanner. And for example here, I can see that we have eight planks. If I wanted to craft a chest, I can just click the little move items button here. And if I click craft one, it's gonna take those planks from wherever they are in any of our rootable inventories and use them to make that chest. So going forward, we don't have to rummage through all of our chests, all of our drawers, and all of our furnaces to find the item that we want. We can just shift click the recipe inside of the storage scanner and it's gonna pull those items from wherever they are, and then we have the option to craft one, four, eight, or a whole stack. Of course, the only downside here is the fact that it does require power. Thankfully, it doesn't require power passively, but it does require power whenever you take items out of or put items into your network via the storage scanner. Thankfully, I don't think that should be too difficult for us to work with if we go ahead and craft up just a regular Minecraft hopper. It can also, by the way, use the items in your inventory, which is also pretty nifty. We should then be able to just fill this up with coal and leave the sterling dynamo going for a prolonged period of time. Speaking of coal, right now we just have the one frozen deep slate coal, but that's because in the previous stream we couldn't automate the production of frozen deep slate. Now that we can, we should be able to get some deep slate coal fairly easily by just placing down the frozen deep slate around the orchid. Smelting those up amongst our three blast furnaces. And once all of those have smelted, we can of course go ahead and just place all of them down and that should get us more than enough coal to keep the storage scanner going for I think quite some time. I think in general, it's not a particularly high powered machine and given that currently we don't have any other machines using any of our power i think putting half a stack of coal into here should keep us going for quite some time and of course if we ever run out of power we can just reload this up with yet more coal and that will keep the storage scanner going of course at some point in the fairly near future i would like to look at uh, automating the production of coal and therefore the uh, fueling of this sterling dynamo but i think for the time being this is going to get the job done Speaking of machines, it looks like the next step in the cool Frozen Progress questline here is to get a pulverizer. This doesn't seem too difficult, the, uh, the recipe for a machine frame. We just take a standard machine frame and then craft it using the mana pool into a machine frame from Thermal Expansion. Let's quickly see, do we have what it takes to make one of these? We don't. Of course, as per usual, we have no iron whatsoever. And so I think what I would like to do in the next episode is try and get some block places which are added by the Opolis Utilities mod and block breakers which are also added by the Opolis Utilities mod. If we can get both of these and if we can maybe get some pipes, we do have the pipes mod and these seem pretty straightforward as well. They do require a lot more iron, but if we can get some pipes and if we can get a block placer and a block breaker, what we should potentially be able to do is take the frozen stones from these storage drawers, pipe them around two block places that are placed around the orchid. Those block places are then going to place those down. They'll be instantly transformed via the loud bang the orchid emits. And then once they have transformed into frozen ores, we can then use the block breaker to break those ores. And the only problem that we're going to run into is collecting the ores that break, because I don't think that we have really any easy item collector that we can use. There's the Vacumulator from Thermal Expansion. That requires an Ender Pearl. We don't currently have one, although we could potentially just go and look for an Enderman and see about killing him for the Ender Pearl. Alternatively, there's also the Hopper Hawk, which is a flower from, hello, my friend. The Hopper Hawk is a flower from Batania, which also works, oh, I'm so low on health, <laughs> which also works like a Vacumulator in that it can collect items from a large area, but to make the hoppercock, we need a rune of air. The rune of air is made on the runic altar. The runic altar requires either a mana diamond or a mana pearl, which means we would need either an ender pearl that puts us in the same situation as with the vacuumulator or a mana diamond, which you guessed it requires a diamond, which I don't believe we get to until we head through to the nether and complete part of the lukewarm quest line. So I'm not quite sure which route we're going to go through there. I think either way we are going to have to go 
and find an Enderman if we want to automatically collect those resources. And I guess the final thing before I leave, as I mentioned before, I do want to do a little bit of work on the base here. And we don't have many mods that add decorative blocks in the pack. We don't have Chisel, for example, in the pack available to us. And so what I think I might do is I think I might grab our Pure Daisy. I might get some more Living Rock, grab some regular stone, and I think there's a couple of Living Rock designs that look kind of cool. I quite like the look of these Living Rock bricks here, which you can craft with just four polished Living Rock, which you can craft with four regular Living Rock. And so I think I might do a bit of work between streams, making the cave just a tiny bit bigger and placing down some decorational blocks so that our roof, floor, and walls are not made up of this haphazard mess of diorite, stone, frozen granite, frozen diorite, and grass. I think it's going to look a lot nicer if we can make some of that a bit more uniform with some nicer looking blocks. All right, so just over an hour worth of decorating with the Twitch chat later, and I have temporarily moved the Glacier Flores, and we've gotten rid, or we picked up, I should say, the Mana Spreader as well, and the Orchid, because we're going to redo this area, and I'm going to move a lot of the stuff that is here between streams, but what we have done is built a little bit of kind of a hub room down on this lower level that I'm kind of happy with. We've got living rock bricks in the wall. We've got living wood planks on the floor. We've got some deep slate tiles, which you can make using the stone cutter. Uh, as the Twitch chat pointed out to me, the stone cutter, super nifty because you do not have to smelt the cobbled deep slate. You can just put it directly into the stone cutter and turn it into deep slate tiles. Real nice indeed. We've got that for the roof and for an accent around the walls. And then one thing that the pet creator Ben pointed out to me is that uh, these ice bricks are from the Ice Opolis mod, and they are not only super easy to make, they are made with just one stun brick and four ice shards, but you can also make them using the resource generator Mark II. And so currently we do have those being made over in the corner there. We don't really need any more of them going forward, so we can probably swap that back. I just temporarily turned off the uh, frozen diorite maker. But down here, we now have a new room. And my thought process going forward, uh, you'll see I've placed a mana pool in the center of the room here. My thought process is going to be to have a hole in the roof like that. And I'm going to kind of reorganize this room up here. So I think that hole is right here. If we uh, grab our axe, we can break that a tiny bit faster. This is where our current hole is. And so I'm going to make this the center of this top room as well. We'll move a lot of what's down here. And uh, of course, the way we've set up the lower area is that we can easily make more rooms on three of the four sides. But I'm thinking of grabbing our mana spreader, putting that here, and then surrounding that on this upper level with glacier flora. Because we're probably going to need a lot more glacier flora if we want to automate the transformation of all of these frozen stones into ores. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a bunch of glacier floras down around this mana spreader, dig out a hole to the roof. That hole to the roof is going to make this area colder, but of course we're not going to spend that much time in here because we are going to spend more of our time down on this lower level. And all we would need to do is shift right click on the mana spreader and then shift right click down here. And that's going to take all that mana and shoot it down into this mana pool. And what we'll work on next time is we'll place down the orchid around here. And we can potentially look at getting a floating orchid to place it just near the mana pool so it doesn't have to take up space around it. We can look at getting those block breakers and block places that I showed earlier. And then we can look at taking all that stuff and then moving further along in the frozen quest line here to automate the production potentially with pulverizers, but definitely with blast furnaces. Nevertheless, those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Frozenopolis there.